past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the all right hello hello everybody this is cute show here and now whenever we last left off with this series we had deku and miriko now deku he made a piece of technology with miriko in mind anyone can use it however deku designed it with her ears in mind so she can communicate with her friend, Ryuko, who's still in a medically, or inside of a coma. Now, she was able to speak with her and talk to her friend about exactly what has been happening and what's gone on. And that was very tricky. They talked about a few things, got some information, and Miriko basically assured her that the business is running fine. And that she doesn't have to worry about it. Now, Ryoko, she was kind of angry at this. She confronted Deku because she was worried about her friend. And then she got put into a coma because of his inventions. And now he's what? The way she sees it, Deku is trying to use this as an advantage or a step to get closer to Miriko. And that is still annoying her. Now, with that being said, Deku and Miriko, they did go to lunch, as somebody was actually following them. And, well, we actually will cut up about, hmm, let's say about one month and three weeks later or one month and three and a half weeks later so by this time Ryuko would have been in a coma for just a little over two months now in this time frame a lot would happen the investigation as to who got Deku's hero equipment would finally get off the ground they gain traction they have leads they have ideas they have evidence they found the vehicle abandoned, and from there, they could step forwards and build on it. Along with even private detectives and many other things and resources Mr. Gary Rozu has invested into the case. Now, along with that, Deku, he's even actually helped set up time frames for certain people who do want to talk to Ryuko. Since Deku's informed the entire Hero Association, or her company, about the equipment that allows him to talk to her. And this was actually something that kind of surprised Miriko. Or Ryoko, not Miriko. Ryoko, she would often than not find out that certain people are visiting her. And she does actually have her own questions to ask about this or what's happening in the real world. She doesn't get much information, but she does at least get that Deku is helping out their company. Deku, he has somewhat gotten back to his own job and work. However, Miriko, she does stick around. And that's the sort of thing that does seem weird. By this time, two months have passed, so Deku doesn't need a bodyguard. And that's what she does think. Deku is still leading her on. Deku is still dragging out this game of cat and mouse, hunter and prey. And she's worried about her friend. Now, we actually do have in Deku's workshop currently, where Deku, he is actually looking at Miriko. As he does go to hold up something in his hand and press down, as he does tell her to begin. Miriko actually quickly lunging forwards and boosting fast as she lunges into a metal target and directly smashes right through it effortlessly. 
as she does begin to start jumping around and hopping around. And Deku, he actually does watch it. Miriko, she's actually starting to improve with the equipment. While she's in midair, she's actually able to boost and move around, dodge projectiles that would possibly come towards her or even at her. Now, they do run through the entire test, and there is actually where Deku does go to bring up his hand and press down the thing. As Miriko, she does actually spin around and look directly at him. So, how long was that? Hmm, let's see. The first time you ran the course, you did it in about five minutes. Uh-huh. And what about now? Well, you've certainly improved. The gadget was me with you in mind. The first time you used it, you got down to at least three minutes and 28 seconds. However, now you just ran the course in a little over 90 seconds. A minute and a half. Really? 96 seconds to be exact. Okay, so I'm three times better. Mm, eh, not exactly. Now, Deku, he does actually step forwards, informing Miriko that he did have to actually change around and move a few things to make her equipment feasible for her in combat, i.e. the iron leggings or the essential armor she has had to wear in the front of her legs. It's made for flexibility and dexterity. With that in mind, along with that, it even does help to monitor her body weight and anything that would need to be adjusted, as if carrying a person, holding something up, or quite possibly the event of being weightless, where she can then switch over to a different mode and actually move something in her toe or in her feet. Now, Miriko, she has gotten a handle on the strange way this stuff does work. Deku, he's a miracle worker. She couldn't even imagine, like three months ago, having this type of equipment. Along with that, she's moved up higher in the hero rankings. She's made tremendous leaps. <sighs> Gotta say, this is still pretty crazy, don't you think? Maybe. But even then, it's not unethical, or really too bad. Then again, seeing you with one of my inventions, I could get used to it. Hmm? Really? Yeah, I gotta say, it's quite interesting. Now, Deku, he actually just stared at Miriko, as she's gonna step forwards, her walking right up to him and actually going to bring her hand up and grab Deku by his chin. So, you really think it's very interesting? I do. Tell me, are we playing these games again? Now, Deku, he can actually feel the stares of certain people. There's somebody on the second level about 100 feet to his left, somebody 75 feet on the third level up to his right. And he's pretty certain there's two people behind him who are about to ask him something. He heard their footsteps before they started walking up. Okay. So, how about we play these games later? Being embarrassed at work isn't something that suits either of us, does it? <laughs> Maybe. But still. Her actually going to pull away. Her putting one of her hands on her hips, talking about how... Deku, he's really come very far with tech. I have. I even made this little thing right here. Hmm? Deku holding up his hand. What is that? It's a watch. You made a watch? It's a bit more than that, Romy. It's special to me. Trust me. It would be a lot easier to explain but I like it the way it is right now. Now, Rumi, or Miriko, she actually has go to walk into a place where she can go sit down and grab something to drink. As Deku does inform some people of certain projects that they're currently working on, helping them perform minor adjustments, and even actually looking over certain blueprints they do have. 
Deku instructing them that the bionics for this part would actually be right here, and even being presented with a model. As he does look over everything and actually go to set some stuff up. Now, you do actually have Miriko, who, after getting a phone call, she has come running out of the room. Her nearly busting the door off of its hinges as she does run into the lab. And she does actually go past the glass wall to see Deku. Izuku, we gotta go. Hmm? What? Deku to say. As he's just staying there with the sleeve rolled back and different things covering his arms. Deku actually moving his hand up and asking her exactly what happened. As the robotic limb does actually follow in unison. What happened? It's, well, Ryuko. What? What happened? The equipment didn't malfunction again, did it? No, it, it's not that. It's something else. Sh she's awake. What? No. Deku, yeah. Hearing those words, he immediately does do one thing. He does grab the notes covering his arm and immediately rip all of them off. As he does turn to somebody and tell them that they're in charge right now. This being where he does go to leave. And everybody in the room, they do actually look at the person who's just been told they're in charge. Uh, that, I, I, I just, um, so, I don't know what to do. Anyways, now, we do actually have Deku and Miriko. Who do make their way to the hospital and go into the room Rumi or Ryuko is currently in. Now, as the door does open, you do actually have Ryuko, who is holding onto this strange device in her hand. As she does turn her head to see Deku and Miriko walk in. <laughs> You're finally awake. It's you? Yeah, it's me. So I guess this is the thing that's been used to talk? It is. Gotta say. That's quite weird. How do you mean? Talking within one stream is perfectly normal. However, hearing someone else's thoughts, that's a thing that's hard. I, I won't try to explain it to you. But right now, what did the doctor say about your brain scans? My brain scans? They haven't gone over anything with me yet. They have yet to do that, actually. They're more worried about me being hydrated and fed. I see. You do need to take it easy. You've been in that bed for two months. Two months? That's a little less hard to believe. With speaking with everybody and all that. So, how is my company doing? Okay, uh, Ryuko, it's actually doing better. Hmm? Y yeah, along with that, you're never going to believe this. I am now in the top 50 pro heroes. F 50? Yeah, I I'm, well, actually number 36. Th thir 36. Yeah. I I'm... I'm... well baffled. It's not that hard to believe. Hmm? Her turn to Deku. Who, he does appear to be the exact same. So, you made this thing? I did. And I made it specifically to help you recover. You're going to want to take it easy and at least let doctors go over your brain scans with you. The fact that you're awake right now is actually astonishing to me. How so? Well, doctors put it this way. In the best case scenario, your odds of waking up were around 70%. I see. And the worst case... About the same with the opposite. I, however, found a way to help you. 
and I'm glad it worked. I see. I would like to speak with you privately. I understand. I can already tell what it would be about. Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? Rumi, this is... I need to talk with him. Okay, I understand. But you can talk to him with me here. Rumi, listen, I, I just woke up. And he's the one person who hasn't tried speaking to me. I know exactly what might be going through his head right now. And he knows what might be going through mine. So, please, let me speak to him. I really don't... Rumi, it's okay. Hmm. Really? I mean, I don't... Listen. Deku actually turning towards her. We'll both be fine. We won't hurt each other. We'll just talk and try and come to an understanding, okay? Okay? Fine. Her walking out of the room. As Deku, he does close the door. And go to walk over and sit down towards her. So, exactly what do you wish to speak about? The last time I saw you, those guys broke into your lab. And a lot of things happened. Yes, it, it happened, yeah. You also smashed into me while I was in a power suit and broke my arm. Along with gave me a concussion. I do apologize for that. Apology accepted. So, did they ever find those guys? They did. However, the tech's already been long gone. Still trying to recover that. Along with that, those guys refused to give up their employer. Fake names and everything. I've even gone over some of the investigations, thanks to Mr. Yoyorozu. Hmm? What do you mean? Mr. Yoyorozu, I've had to convince him. Kind of more like blackmail, if you do want to put it into perspective. To try and find my inventions because of how deadly and devastating they could actually be. I'm sorry. Are you saying you'd made weapons? Unintentionally. My equipment. Their tools. One is a power source. It's very strong. One was supposed to be a solution for trash. One was supposed to be a solution and help for construction. And one... Yeah. That one I'm sorry about. Hmm, I see. So, exactly what does that mean? That means a few things can happen. I would like to give you an examination. I know physically you are fine. However, I think you need to go through x-rays, CAT scans, and many other things to make sure you don't have permanent nerve damage. The fact that you were able to shrug off a blast like that from that weapon, it was impressive. I will give you that. You're quite resilient. Even then, that weapon you were hit with, the amount of force, I've calculated it. If it were to have hit a concrete wall, let's put it like this. Make a concrete block five foot long and five foot thick. That device could punch that into dust, and you were able to tank that. Really? It sounds like you just made a weapon. I told you, unintentionally. My gear is still circulated through the markets. However, with how complex it is and dangerous, it's barely usable to the right people. What do you mean? There are people who could, theoretically, Take my tech and actually use it. In fact, I think there's actually an investigation going on that might be involved with some of my gear. What do you mean? Well, mysterious disappearances and how they're linked. A crime organization. They've had members disappear for no ex actual reason. So I've thought about it. It could be any four of the items. Really? Yes. And that's just the problem. 
If it is any of my items, I would rather not have them used that way. I would rather not have my life's work drawn to the dirt because of someone who wanted to make a quick buck. Couldn't that be said for you? No, it couldn't. Because if I wanted to make a quick buck, I would create something that would help the world, not hurt people. I do not operate in that manner. In fact, I've actually taken precautions against future instances like this. I chewed out my boss, Mr. Yeirozu. The only reason why he did not fire me was because I saved his daughter. You saved his daughter? Yes. In fact, he quite literally owes me her life. I was quite persistent in what I had to tell him. He made a black card. A master key, if you will. It opens my lab. And no other piece of information like that, no card like that should have existed, without my knowledge. Mr. Yeruzo has been made quite well aware of my predicament. So, I've given him a few more boundaries. At first, I was very lenient with him. He is my boss, after all. He does give me money and people that will allow me to continue my research and even sell things to him. However, he does not own everything I create, if not at all anything. Okay, now, do you see where I am going with this? I see that apparently your boss, he wanted to treat you like a partner. However, he needs to treat you like a business associate, is that correct? That would be very close to it. What he did essentially caused the break-ins. His daughter wanted me to tutor her. If you remember her correctly, she was that black-haired lady. Or a young woman. I was wondering who she was. That was my next question. I have security footage if you would like to see it and go over everything. In fact, I do actually still have to download it. Hmm. You came prepared. I thought about the questions you may ask me. However, I also do at least have other footage you can see. Home footage, if you want to call it that. Me and your friend Mirako. Rumi. She and I do have an interest in one another. And you cannot really stop that. No matter what you say. I myself am estranged to these emotions, and so is she. However, we figure it out. It's quite funny. She's a lot more girly than she does come off as. And I find that to be quite interesting. And she does seem to not be intimidated by my realistic mindset. <laughs> That's not exactly wrong. What do you mean? Rumi, she herself, is not stupid. Her intelligence lies in strategy and quick wit and thinking. However, I don't think you would understand that. I would. Hmm? I could understand it. I may not be the best in many of my other fields. However, when it does come to intelligence and other things, I have a pretty good understanding. I will make my situation fit my parameters. On my terms. That is how I do operate. And, well, I do hope we can come to some sort of understanding. Hmm. I do believe so. However, there will be problems. I understand. Deku actually going to pull his phone and hand it over to her, telling her that she can look through that phone and find whatever she does like. There are videos already preloaded on screens. All she has to do is click one. Hmm? You've been recording yourself and her? No. Those are security cameras of my apartment. People have broken into my house before. So I have installed them. Along with that, they are very, very nice to have. 
Hmm, I see. Now, she doesn't really start to watch a few things. She does play back that day where she left, and Deku, he was getting back to work. She does watch everything happen. Deku would lie through his teeth, and he started getting things ready. He seemed to be actually working like a pro. And then there was whenever she bought it in. Her intervention. Her trying to, well, just be a hero. She went into that situation without a calm mind. And when Deku tried to warn her, Deku tried to tell her to not go after those people. If she listened to that warning whenever Deku was there, maybe this, this could have been a different scenario. Maybe things could have turned out differently. Along with that, there's the other thing she does see. It all playing out in front of her. Deku and Miriko, they do seem to have, well, an actual connection. They do have their moments, and she does see it. She's just kind of surprised and annoyed. And for right now, she does believe that she can tolerate Deku. Since he did just help her out quite a bit. However, she's still worried. Her friend is like a sister to her, and she can't help but worry. Now, with that, she does actually tell Deku that Miracle can come back in. As Deku just walk over to the door and open it up. Now, you do actually have Miracle who is standing there. As Deku does inform that she can come back in. Hmm? Okay, what did you guys... We talked about a few things. We've come to an understanding. Let's see. So, you've just woken up. Yes, I have. I believe I can help you with physical therapy if you would not mind. Hmm? You wish to get back up on back to work, correct? I felt the same way after my arm was broken. Working with one hand is difficult. However, you, it will take you a few weeks to physically recover. If you do not mind, I can assist you. Hmm. That offer I would not really like. Yes, you would not like, but it would be your quickest way to get back to work. I can provide you with an exoskeleton. However, you could not, let's just put it in a way, transform or go into the dragon mode you do have. As soon as you're able to walk around and do things without it, I would recommend you transform and see where you do lie there. Once you properly recover, then you can inform me. And I can take it back. Now, this does seem to be quite strange. The guy is just so nonchalant. He can't just be this see-through, this black and white. He says things so casually. She's used to people lying, people trying to hide secrets, trying to just be deflective. But this guy, he's different. That would be nice. Alrighty then. I believe an associate of mine does have one lying around. He has not used it for anything, so I will actually get in contact with him. And see where that does go. Now, Deku does walk out and he says, does go to bring up his phone. And Miriko and Ryuko, they actually do start to speak. Wanting to catch her up on everything that's been going on for the last two months. Since they can finally have a conversation without the helmet. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.